Okay, and welcome to week three, and this is the photography course. And today we are going to be giving you a refresher on lighting. And the reason we're doing that is lighting is completely fundamental to photography. And we're talking this time about artificial light or controlled lighting. And let me talk to you about what that means. Here we are, and uh, lighting refresher. And so if I move on here, I'm going to introduce a word here that may not seem applicable to your current situation, but it actually is. And the word is studio. Now, what is a studio? A studio is a place that you go to take pictures. And usually they aren't the same type of pictures you take outside, obviously. These are portraits. Uh, they could be other things. They could be product shots. Uh, they could be art. It could be all kinds of things that you're doing. Uh, but the difference is, in a studio, you are controlling everything. Everything is under control. And outside, everything is not under control, ever. When you're outside, the wind starts picking up when you aren't expecting it to. The clouds go over the sun. The clouds come you know, go away from the sun. Uh, something happens. A noise shows up. You know, a fire truck goes by. Everything is going everywhere at the same time. And so in a studio, the idea is that you don't have those types of problems. And so the lighting can be turned off, meaning that every single light that is in there is there at your direction, and you can hit the switch, and they're all gone. So you can start with complete darkness and bring up one light at a time if you need to. That's how they work. And that means you don't get any extraneous light from elsewhere. So typically a studio will not have windows. Or if they do, the windows will be such that you can block them off. You can draw these shutters over them or something like that and create a nice dark environment. And it's not like we don't like sunlight in studios, but the fact is... We can't control sunlight, so we don't want it in there. And the nice thing about a studio is it shouldn't matter what time of the day you work, the studio is going to look the same. Okay, so the photographer controls the character and nature of the lighting. So you get to decide what the lighting is going to do. So, for example, let's talk about some of those characteristics. Uh, we're going to keep to the basics in this class, uh, meaning that you can learn a lot about lighting. There's all kinds of little nuances to lighting, but some of the very basics are that you have, for example, hard light. Hard light is a particular type of light, and you have soft light. Now, you can generate either of those in very different ways, uh, but uh, one way or another, uh, you can have one or the other. Uh, you can also have a warm light or a cool light, and so, and of course, there's other lighting in between, but the reason I'm bringing those up is because those are characteristics of light uh, that the average person can know and understand once once you uh, think about it. So let's talk about hard light for a minute. Hard light creates hard shadows. So if you have a hard light, uh, you are going to have a clearly defined shadow of whatever your object is. So let's say, for example, you're on a sunny day and you're standing on a, in the middle of a parking lot and you're going to cast a shadow and that shadow will be very clearly defined. It'll be etched there, razor sharp, and uh, wherever the sun happens to be pointing, the shadow will be pointing in the opposite direction. And so that can be a useful effect. Sh hard, lights, hard lights also create reflections and highlights. If you have a shiny object, that hard light is going to hit that object and create a highlight. And usually it's a small highlight. A point source of light creates a small, bright highlight. And so if it's a shiny object, it's going to be like a little bitty star that shows up there. And that can be very interesting. And it will also create possibly reflections and other surfaces. Uh, and it will emphasize the details of the surface. If you've got an object that's cracked or rough, you will get to see all those little dimples because each one of those is going to have its own little shadow created by the hard light. Hard light is also directional, as we said. If the sun moves, the shadow moves, or if the hard light moves, the shadow moves. And so, if you don't like where the shadow is, move the light, because it's controlled. You're in your studio now, which could be a room in your basement. If you have a basement, it could be a large closet. Uh, it could be your bedroom, you know, with the, with the windows closed, or at night, or something like that. Uh, it could be any room you can imagine where you have a certain amount of control to set up and take some pictures. A hard light is created by a small light source. Now, you might think of the sun as a very large light source because it actually is. It's many times the size of the Earth. 
but it's also 93 million miles away. So the sun appears very small from here. Uh, and that creates a small point source of light in the sky. And that creates those hard shadows on a sunny day. Now a soft light is pretty much exactly the opposite of a hard light in these regards. A soft light creates nondescript soft shadow or no shadow at all. If you have a soft light lighting something up, uh, you may see kind of a fuzzy shadow or it may not appear to have a shadow. That's always possible too. You may have to look for that shadow. Uh, and usually it's a short shadow too. Soft light creates large reflections and expanded highlights, not point sources. And so therefore, you will have a, uh, a gleam instead of a highlight. So it's really the same thing, but it's larger, and so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't create that contrast. It's a very evenly contrasted thing. And surface details are softened. So if you've got little cracks in your object, you're not going to see them in the soft light. The soft light will sort of even them out. Most soft light appears to come from everywhere. Uh, the sky is lit up. When the sun is, uh, is up on a, on a cloudy day, for example, or an overcast day, it's a white sky, then the sun itself doesn't really matter where it is. The light is really coming from the whole sky. And so for that reason, the shadows aren't really directional. You know, in fact, you don't even have shadows. If you look for your shadow, you might not even be able to see it. Or if you do, it will be very soft and nondescript. And uh, their soft lights are generated by large light sources, like the sky or fluorescent lighting, things like that. that. Those all create some nice soft lights. Okay, so what we have here is what we're going to call a controlled environment. What I've done is I've created a studio to demonstrate the differences between hard and soft light. And this is uh, part of what your assignment is to be, uh, to create some kind of a controlled environment uh, in which you can experiment with light and uh, try some different things. Now it's important to remember it doesn't have to be this small. Now right now what we have is a, uh, a still life, not much of a still life, but a still life nonetheless. So I'm going to zoom in on that apple and I'm going to get a nice focus. Now the focus, you can begin to see the surface details. So we're going to start with that. Now the surface details, and in this case, uh, we have a little bit of light leak. It's just not total darkness yet, but I'm going to, uh, to turn on a light in a minute. I'm going to give you an idea what that light looks like. Okay, this instrument, and I'm sort of being my own camera operator here, uh, this is a soft box light, but the actual light itself is a very, very small filament in there, which you can see. Now, if I point this away, you can see it puts out a great deal of light in a small place. This is another type of lighting instrument that we have access to. As you can see, it's an LED bank. If I turn that on, you can see that this puts out a fair amount of light as well. Now these are cooler. You can get your hand right up on that. It doesn't really get hot. And this will give you a kind of a medium tone light because the light surface is larger. Remember, the larger the light surface, the softer the light. Okay, here we are back in our studio box again. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on that uh, softbox light, which puts on a great deal of light. And as you can see, it's putting out so much light, I've really got to tone it down here. i to tone down the exposure. Now, you can see a few things about this. Is that, uh, let me put some neutral density in there. You can see that it is creating shadows. And... Uh, as you move the light up and down, the shadows are going to move as well. So, if I position the light carefully, I can get a, a relatively clearly defined shadow of the apple itself. I'm also creating reflections in the surfaces. These are clear reflections. And you can even get the texture. And you can even get the texture of that apple. And so hard lights bring out those kinds of details. My apologies for the photography in this particular section, but you can see that a hard light does bring out those little bitty tiny reflections, and as you move the hard light, they will change. Okay, now here we're going to go to the opposite extreme. 
Uh, this controlled environment gives you the softest light possible. The, uh, this is a, a photo cube. And this lighting instrument, though it doesn't put out a lot of power, is a very large instrument. Notice how it reflects off itself and so it, it puts a nice soft light in there. And then everything in the photo cube is basically reflective. And so you end up having light coming from all directions at once. And so if we look at the effect that this gives you, it is a very softening effect. And if you can see the shadow at the base of the apple, even though it's on a reflective surface, it's a very soft shadow. And if we go back to this object here, we see we're not getting the sparkles as much. We're not getting the, the hard shadows and the reflections and the glare and the gleam. And so that is part of what happens when you use a soft light. So if you think of outdoors on a, on a cloudy day, this is the kind of light you would get. And you can simulate this light in any number of ways. You can create a soft light by putting some sort of a sheet over a light or by drawing a curtain or something like that. Now, if you're going to use colored light, the reason why you might do this is to create a certain mood. And we kept it simple. We basically said warm light versus cool light. And you can do it either way. And to understand this, first understand that white light is supposed to be neutral. And once we've said that and everyone agrees on it, then the problem is there's no such thing as actual white light. We just have to approximate it. So when you white balance a video camera, what you're doing is you're telling the camera to neutralize whatever light it's seeing. So for example, if you're on a sunny day outside and you have a white piece of paper and you point the camera at it and say, camera, this is white, it will ignore any color that might be hitting that white. And so it will remove all that so that the white looks plain, uh, clear white, and everything else should look correct as well. Now that's not necessarily the way you want it, because you may want a warm look. Neutral light is neither warm nor cool. It, it should be you know, kind of sterile, which isn't always what you're looking for. So when adding video, a video effect, this is done after the white balance, meaning that you establish illumination, and then you apply color to whatever light source that you're getting the effect you want. And so in photography, it's a little bit different because typically you don't white balance a film camera or a uh, DSLR. The DSLRs are set to recognize daylight or tungsten light or indoor light, and sometimes you can set them on automatic and they'll figure it out, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Uh, but typically your, your DSLR is either going to think of the light as outdoor or indoor. And so that's the closest you generally have to come. Either way, applying color is possible. Now another thing you can do with a character of light is to change its color. Now we're going to keep this nice and simple too. Let's say that light, let's say that white light would be relatively neutral. Now there is no such thing as white light. Most light is either warm or cool. Now some instruments allow you to apply a filter to them, which would give it a more of a warm character. And so you can see how that makes a slight difference. And you can apply this also by using colored fabrics and things like that uh, to give it a more of a warm sense or cool sense. You can use a blue piece as well to cool that light down. Now, in general, indoor lighting is always warm, and fluorescent lighting tends to be cool. And outdoor lighting, believe it or not, is cooler rather than warmer, except in morning or in late evening. So let's do it. Here is what I want you to do. I want you to create a studio space. It doesn't matter where it is or what it is. It can be a cardboard box if you want. It could be a bedroom, a basement, anything. And do something. Experiment with hard versus soft lighting. You can use room lights that are our point source of light. You can use flashlights. Or uh, if you have a light source that has a shade on it, a shade is a softening device. It's a diffuser. Uh, you, can, you could light up a sheet, for example, will create a, a large light source of light because the sheet will effectively refract the light, and so it will make it larger. So there's, there's ways that you can do that. You can bounce light off of something, like a ceiling, for example. So use your imagination. 
Try applying colors to the lights. Try using like colored paper or colored gel on the lights. If you have it, even if you don't think you have it, you probably do. Even like a red shirt or something like that might give you a warm look. Play around with it. Make the ordinary extraordinary. Try to do something interesting. I know you can do it. Okay, and there we go. That is what I want you to think about this week. And we will uh, show these on Tuesday of next week. And what I want you to do is I want you to create five images. Five images that are different. Don't just do five of the same thing. It's five images that are different uh, using different combinations of things. Use soft light, hard light, anything you want to do. But make it work. Make it work for you. And uh, that will be all.